84 days to go until the release of Prince Caspian. So now when I look at my countdown clock, there's a big fat one instead of a big fat two at the beginning. We're getting closer. And it looks like uh, possibly my next video might be my trailer analysis. Just a rumor, but uh, the, the Prince Caspian trailer might be out with Disney's Enchanted, which releases on November 21st. That's just a rumor. We don't know for sure. But if that's true, that means uh, the trailer would be released uh, eight days from, from when I'm uh, recording this. And um, we didn't get a tra an official announcement on the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe trailer until uh, five days before it hit. So uh, if this is true, uh, we, I would expect to have an official announcement on it um, before the end of the week. So uh, that, that'll be pretty... That'll be a uh, Pretty darn awesome. It would make sense, to, you know, Disney uh, is doing Enchanted, so it would make sense if it was with it. Uh, the question is, is it going to be released online first um, or in theaters with Enchanted? You know, I can see Disney releasing it just with Enchanted at first to, to get to compel you to pay money and go see Enchanted, and uh, which I would certainly do if they did that. I would totally fall for that marketing scam, you know, because um, I would probably go see it a few times. But uh, so that might happen, then it'll be online a few days later. But I'm hoping it'll go um, online first. But uh, anyway, the only really big piece of actual news is the um, uh, production blog number 10 is online. A couple new pieces of artwork. And uh, my favorite one of the new batch is uh, of the treasure chamber. And because it's one of my favorite scenes in Prince Caspian, and, and maybe even the whole series, I just I love it. I think it could be a great cinematic moment. I'm gonna, I want to begin by uh, reading... By reading it, uh, reading uh, Lewis's description of the treasure chamber from the book seems like a, you know, a really good place to start. And uh, so, C.S. Lewis wrote, "There was a kind of path up the middle, as it might be in a greenhouse, and along each side of the interval stood rich suits of armor, like knights guarding the treasures. In between the suits of armor and on each side of the path were shelves covered with precious things." Uh, I love this moment in the book. It, se it seems like it could be very cinematic, where, remember, um, they uh, go down the steps, and Edmund uses his torch, and they, they count 16 steps to the bottom, and then Lucy says, oh, it must be Caraparvel. There were 16 steps that Edmund shines his torch around. They all go, oh, you know, oh, you know and uh, there's the treasure, and then they're just kind of silent. They're in shock. And um, I thought that could be a great cinematic moment, which is why one of the first things I noticed um, when I... Uh, uh, saw this new artwork is that it looks like that appears to be sunlight streaming in through there and uh, so it looks like this scene takes place in the daytime in the book it's nearly dark thanks to Vernon Bush for correcting me on that one it's uh, nearly dark when the scene takes place which is the reason it's dark and they go down there they can have that big uh, reveal and um, it might be dark anyway but it, it looks like there are shafts of light so I'm hoping what's going to happen in the movie is this is kind of how I've envisioned it is that uh, they go down there and it's a cloudy day and so, so the sun's not out, which is why it's still dark inside the treasure room. And they go down there, and you know, and Edmund doesn't have his torch. And uh, but then it's dark, and they're like, "Wow, is this it?" And then all of a sudden, um, the sun comes out, and the shafts of light, you know, shoot in, and psh, it's like, <gasps> you know, and then there's the treasure. That could be a great cinematic moment. You know, that'd be that'd be really awesome. This is um, a fantastic scene. Uh, I think once once again, I'll say it again. It could be a great cinematic moment in the film. I love when Peter pulls out his sword and says, "This is my sword, Rindon. With it, I killed the wolf." And then while getting their gifts, and it'll be cool to see if they draw attention to the fact, uh, as the book does, to the fact that uh, Edmund doesn't have any gifts. I love in the book where Lewis says that you know Edmund didn't have any gifts; it was his own fault. You can read about it in the other book. You know, I love how um, he says that, and uh, so it'll be cool to see if they draw attention to it. And also, um, uh, we know from some spy videos that are here on YouTube, or at least we think. So it appears that Lucy will have her dagger in Prince Caspian, and it's interesting that uh, in Prince Caspian. Uh, Lewis seemed to forget about Lucy's dagger because, um, you know, she has her cordial, but the dagger, he doesn't even mention it. And uh, so I'm, I'm guessing they're going to correct Lewis's mistake. Or maybe it wasn't a mistake. Maybe he just decided to take it out somehow. But uh, so that'll be cool. Uh, this blog says uh, something really interesting about how they were, their logic is that uh, all the damage from, or most of the damage from Caraparavel came from the Telmarines attacking it. I'd always imagined it always being just from time. You know, it's been 1,300 years. You know, obviously the building starts to crumble and uh, fall down. But if they're saying a lot of it's from attack. And um, 
So uh, they made it so it looks like they changed the location of the treasure chamber door slightly and uh, made it in a more secret place to explain why the Telmarines wouldn't have found it. Not a big change, you know. I just thought that was really interesting that they thought of that. Kind of reminds me of what I thought when I saw uh, the witch's courtyard in Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe with all the statues. And uh, it looks like, I mean, they don't actually say it, but they seem to be implying that most of those statues were put there during the battle that, uh, you know, presumably took place 100 years ago when the White Witch first came. And uh, which is why most of the, the stone creatures have weapons and armor. I'd always gotten the impression from reading the books that, because it's not just the courtyard, there are statues all inside her house as well in the book. And uh, I'd always got the impression that it was like Tumnus, it was just people that she'd arrested and, you know, for whatever reason, and you know they just happened to be there when he turned them into stone, and um, it, and then for with the treasure chamber, I'd always thought of the damage being more from age than from the actual attack. It just everything just kind of crumbled over time, which I always thought was a cool concept. And uh, it's one of the biggest design challenges in the film. I think is the Caraparabell ruins, just because it has to be familiar enough. So when you get it, you go, oh, yeah, you can see how it's Care Paravel now. But it has to be, you know, vague enough to where you can see where the kids wouldn't immediately recognize it, even though they reign there for, you know, a long time. And um, so it's, it's a really big, uh, really big design challenge. I'm looking forward to seeing how they do it. I didn't really like what I saw in the very first production blog video at the ruins. I didn't really like what I saw, but we didn't see much. So we'll wait. Um, Roger Fordos talks about uh, the destruction of Care Paravel affecting parts of the treasure chamber. It's a really interesting idea, but I hope they keep it subtle at most, because I, I just love the fact how, one of the reasons I love the scene is that up to now, it's mostly unfamiliar things, at least as far as they're concerned. Um, uh, they can't, they don't, it's totally unfamiliar, you know, it's, everything is really damaged and ruined, and they're not really sure where they are, and then they go down in there, and it's just amazing treasure, this amazing sight. I love the contrast. And where they go from being into these ruins to this treasure room. And as a kid, I guess I always loved the fact of, you know, finding the treasure. You know, I thought that was just a cool scene. And uh, I hope, I, I, I would think I would like them to use flashbacks. I mean, I'm not sure visual. I mean, maybe because the book has a, Lewis is so well written. He's talking about how if you had been there, you would hear them saying things like, oh, you remember that? You remember that? You know, and it's a stroll down memory lane for them. And uh, since one of the themes of Rinse Cast is a return, uh, after all, a, few, most, a lot of people don't know this, but the full title of Prince Caspian is Prince Caspian, The Return to Narnia, the r rarely acknowledged subtitle. So it'd be cool if they, yeah, like, maybe you could kind of hear what some of their memories or something like that. I don't know. And um, I counted as closely as I could. I can't, you know, the image isn't big enough to really count, but there don't appear to be 16 steps. I'm not going to be that nitpick nitpicky. I'm not going to pull out my calculator and, you know, and count to see if there are 16 steps in the movie. But, you know, so I just had to point that out. So uh, overall, got to say, once again, Prince Caspian design, uh, thumbs up. I, I think that the design of the treasure chamber looks really cool. It's not how the book describes it. It's not how I imagined it. But uh, I think uh, I can see uh, the pow the thing that makes this scene great. I think that it could really come across uh, with here. So once again, thumbs up on Prince Caspian design. The other new piece of artwork is of the courtyard. It looks very similar uh, to the set uh, that I visited, the most impressive set you know, that, that I saw. Uh, some minor differences, but, you know, just just gives you a sense of what it was like to actually visit it. And the scale was so huge, and uh, just it was incredible. But this looks very, very similar to the set I visited, and it just the scale just blew my mind. But th those are the two uh, big pieces of news. Um, also, uh, Narnia fans is uh, reporting that Play Along Toys is going to be doing uh, toys for Prince Caspian. And uh, I think that they did some three-inch figures for Lord of the Rings, which are pretty well done. I'm hoping the Prince Caspian toys will be bigger than three inches. But uh, I'm a big toy collector. I have, you know, hundreds of toys from a lot of different movies. And the Hasbro toys sucked. These guys were terrible. Like, um, for little kids, they're okay. But these guys are really bad. The the toys from the, the Disney store... the you can, I think you can, you can only get these at the Disney Store. Were really well done. These are pretty detailed and pretty ar articulated. And so I'm hoping that Disney Store will also re release some Prince Caspian toys. They also did a really good job on the Pirates of the Caribbean toys, uh, which I don't have, but actually I have one of them because I don't like the movie. But um, but uh, so I'm hoping they'll have some Prince Caspian toys as well. Uh, and still no Reaper Cheap announcement. What's up with that? You know, I mean, I know the trailer is might might be coming out in a week, but Reaper Cheap, what's going on? Um, so hopefully we'll get an announcement soon. But 184 days to go, and uh, possibly a, uh, possibly a, a week or so until the trailer comes out. And my next video might be my trailer analysis. So, um, you know, no promises, but, you know, stay tuned for that.